Last week I was visited by a good friend of ours, Fritz Kemmler, a very talented developer, and while we were working away on another problem, we thought, just to relax a bit, let's solve another problem in a really, really inefficient but fun way. So we quickly threw together this setup to calculate caustics. That means those light patterns that you see at the bottom of pools, for example, or shallow, clear water. And here's how those patterns are formed. So this is our ground plane, and this is our water plane. And that's a light ray hitting that water plane. And it's refracted. That means it's bent. And then somewhere it hits the bottom here. And for our setup, we made a few assumptions. First, light rays arrive vertically. That would be the case at noon at the equator. And our water surface is wavy. Typically, we displace a grid with a noise. So that's this here. And then our ground, in our case, is flat and parallel to the water line. So what's happening in this case is, at those positions, the lights hit the water, and they are bent and deflected, and then intersect the ground plane at a certain position. And we can see that in this area, we have more light rays arriving at the same position. So those areas here will be brighter, resulting in what we know as caustic patterns. So before we actually build this setup, let's have a look at some of the variables that we need. So first we need incident rays, which are always vertical, pointing towards the water surface, which is a vector of 0, minus 1, and 0, like this. Then we have the rays which have been bent. Let's call those refracted, and we're going to calculate them in Houdini. And they intersect the ground plane at a certain position, which we're going to call hit pause, hit position. And finally, we need some way of finding the orientation of our wavy surface here, and we're going to use the surface normal here. That means a vector sitting perpendicularly on the surface, and that's just the capital N. That's Houdini's notation for a normal. Let's build this by dropping down a grid. Let's zoom out a bit. It's a 10 by 10 grid. That's fine. And in here, I will dial this up to have, say, 400 rows, 400 columns. So we have a decently resolved water surface. And let's move this up a bit. So let's move this 0 0.5 units up so it doesn't sit at 0, 0, 0. Next, there are multiple ways of giving this a bit turbulence. You could use the attribute randomize or the old school mountain, which I'm going to do in my case. I'll just decrease the height a bit to 0 0.5 and maybe increase the element size to 2 so that I get this kind of wavy surface here. Second, we need a ground plane. Let's just copy this grid over, paste it here, and let's move it down to all 0, 0, 0. And we can decrease our rows and columns to 2 by 2. We only need one single polygon here. But we need it to be bigger in size, so we make sure that even if we have deflected rays, they can hit something, even if they go out of this 10 by 10 square grid. So this is my bottom, the sea floor, and this is my sea. Next, we need normals in order to be able to gauge how the sea is oriented. Let's create those by dropping down a normal node and setting this to be point normals like so, which I can then display so that worked. Next, let's refract those rays and intersect them with our grid using a point wrangle because we want to do this for each point on our ocean surface here. The second slot is going to be used to wire in our ground plane. And in here, what we're going to do is first we're going to create a vector. Let me just look up what we decided for its name. So it's called refracted. So we're going to calculate this direction here. So vector refracted equals 2. And we're going to use the refract function that Houdini has built in. Let's just open its help page here. So it's going to take in a direction. Again, that's this vector here, 0, minus 1, and 0. A normal that we already calculated, and an index. So the index of refraction, or IOR, is a measure of how strongly light is bent when entering a denser medium. In this case, water is denser than air. All right, the direction is just a constant, 0, minus 1, and 0. Then we have our normal, V at capital N. That's what we calculated here in this normal sub. And then its index. And in this case, Houdini expects its index as the IOR value of the medium we are coming from, in our case air, which is close to 1, divided by the IOR of the medium that the ray is entering, in our case water, with an IOR value of 1.33. So 1.0, that's air, divided by 1.33. 33 for water. Okay, that's working. Next, I'd like to find this intersection here. And in order to be able to do that, I'm going to use the intersect function, which expects a direction, so the refracted vector that we just calculated. But also, this vector tells Houdini how far it should look for intersections. So if, for example, for some reason, one of those refracted rays points to the side, it will only point one unit to the side by now as it's normalized and won't show any hits down here. So the first thing we have to do is scale this refracted vector. Just make it longer. Let's do that. Refracted equals refracted times 100. And there's a shorthand for that. So instead of this longer expression, I could write refracted times equals 100, like so. 
That's what I'm going to stick with. So I now scale the length of this vector times 100. Next, let's calculate the intersection of this refracted rays with the ground plane using the intersect function. Again, let's open up the help page and I'd like to use this form here. So we're going to intersect geometry coming through the second input slot. That's the one with the ID one. The origin of our ray is our current position on the water plane. That is basically this position here or for this point, this position here. V at P is a shorthand for that. Then the direction is refracted. And then this ampersand denotes variables that will be changed by this function. So the resulting hit position and the resulting UV coordinates will be written in those variables, which we first have to create. So we're going to create vectors. Let's call this hit P for hit position and UVW. And let's just pipe them in here, like so. Okay, all fine and working. And now what I could do is at this hit position, create a new point, or as I don't need my water surface anymore, at least not its geometric representation, I could just use the points of my water surface and move them to the hit position. So to this position here and build a new grid that tells me where those light rays have hit the ocean floor. So let's do that by just setting our current point position of the water surface to the hit position like so. Let me get rid of that. And now you can see you are getting this weirdly distorted grid. And let's just also reset the normals, which are still pointing in the direction of the water surface. Let's just have them pointing straight upwards. And now you're already seeing those patterns forming where we have more dense points here. That's where multiple rays hit in contrast to those areas where little rays hit or very few rays hit. So let's just get rid of the geometry, accept all the points using an add sub and we check delete geometry, but keep the points. So we end up with this point distribution here. And then let's write those points into a volume. So let's create a standard Houdini volume. Let's check it's two dimensional and make sure it's on the ZX plane as our caustics here. And let's increase our sampling divisions to maybe a thousand by a thousand voxels and call this one density as we're just storing the light density in there. Okay, that's looking right. And to write those individual points into a volume, there's a really fast node called volume rasterized particles, which is even faster than the volume rasterized points, which takes in a volume and a few points in here. And let's just dial back the particle scale to say 0.01, .01, then highlight this node here. Okay, that didn't go as expected because we did not scale our volume here. So it's still sized one by one. Let's increase its scale to be sized 10 by 10. And now we're seeing this. Let's just disable our grid and hit D over our viewport and select a dark background like this. Okay, getting there, I mean, what I could do for now, just increase the filter size. So basically just blur out those points. And you could already see we're getting something caustic-ish. So we could dial in our values from our height field, maybe decrease its height or its element size here. But in my case, I think I dial down the octaves a bit like so and played a bit with the lacunarity and the roughness here. Yeah, something like this. So we are already getting these caustic patterns. However, there is this annoying pattern here. So that's the grid. That's a grid artifact from the grid we're projecting down on our bottom of our seafloor. This effect is more pronounced the smaller our filter size here. However, smaller filter size also means sharper edges, sharper contrast here. How can we get rid of those? Well, for once, what I'm seeing here is the volume resolution is pretty coarse. So let's just fix that by hitting D over our viewport and making sure that in texture, we have the limit resolution unchecked. And maybe let's update this here by just decreasing the resolution and then increasing it again. And the other thing that I'm seeing here is that I have very few points. So I could, of course, increase my grid's resolution here to say a thousand by a thousand, like so. And to compensate for the density coming in here with those many points in the volume rasterized particles, dial back the coverage scale, which is just a density multiplier. So we'd end up with something like this. Better, but still in those areas, we're seeing those grid artifacts. And one way of dealing with those is to do a certain kind of dithering. So A, what we could do is just use a point jitter to jitter those points around a bit to get rid of those gridded artifacts. Let's just scale them zero along the Y axis and let's decrease that scale to a really tiny amount like so. Why is this in here? And now we're getting this dithering. So instead of this grid artifacts, we're now getting a bit of this noise. However, what we could also do is in here, before we delete those points, use another primitive wrangle and scatter more points into those individual primitives. 
to increase the point density overall, but also introduce dithering without moving around those initial hit points. And finally, what we could do is we could blur the volume out only in areas where we have low density. So if we get rid of the point jitter here, only in those areas where the grid becomes really apparent, we could blur out the volume, which for example, could be done using a VDB smooth, which accepts a mask, which I could use to mask out those high density areas, with those sharp edges here and blur out those low density areas where we don't have clear edges, but are just getting those grid patterns from our algorithm. And finally, what we could do is instead of a standard simplex noise in the mountain, use a flow noise that is repeating and make sure we wrap around our hit points to get a perfectly tiling caustics pattern, which you could then use to texture very large areas in your scene. But all this can be topics of another tutorial. Um, let me know in the comments if you're interested in any of those topics or none at all. As always, we are very intrigued to see what you guys use this for. And if you want to see more of that stuff and gain access to in-depth tutorials and longer form courses, you might want to consider supporting us on Patreon. And to everyone who's already a supporter on Patreon, thanks so much, guys. With a very, very special thank you going out to Parasol Island, Gearbox Studio Quebec, Encore VFX, Important Looking Pirates, Rafik Anadol, and Chris Hebert. Thanks so much, guys.